Read this one. Am I, you know, I'm talking about that. This one, the wrong person. Right. So, not a lot of people suggesting this. And by not a lot, I, I mean nobody at the time of filming, but it's an Easter egg song from Call of Duty featuring none other than Tem Mantisan from Wintersan, who is in Kevin's words, a guitar playing machine sent from the future. Okay. Guitar playing machine sent from the future. Um, now what I would like to say about Kevin is in my interview with him, he said he's not a good player. I'm not a good player. I respectfully disagree with that. <laughs> but um, what this means is that this is the first Call of Duty song that we're reacting that by Kevin's estimate has a good guitar player in it. I think there's two of them, but then again, who am I? Well, it all depends on what your standard is. If your standard is stable, then we probably have to agree with Ken. I don't like you very much. I'm trying to say nice things about the person here. Why are you like this? I have to make everything logical and specific because I'm learning computing science, but I'm not good at it, so I need to show off the skill somewhere else. Hit the play button. But are you ready? No! I need to take a break already and say stuff. I agree. This is a completely different thing from everything we have heard from Call of Duty. Yes, yes it is. And the orchestral stuff sounds like Karakangran's orchestrals, except they're in space. Yeah. And suffering from space dimension. So, yeah, kinda. So at first, the vibe I got was the deep space emptiness you would expect from Omega Infinity. It's a black metal band, check it out. Um, 
And then the orchestration started creeping in, and at first I thought Karak Angren, and then because I was in the Winter Sun headspace, it also reminded me of Eternal Darkness. Mm-hmm. You know, the kind of dissonant shock scare effects. Yes. And it was growing and cinematic and evil. And to all our Call of Duty viewers who have not requested this song, all I have to say is, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Um... I think it's already my favorite. I'd have to give it more jams. I like being skip. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, admittedly, there was Archangel there, so I would have to compare it to that one. We shall. Uh, I also have to say, the bass. Yes, the bass was really cool. And I think we actually got to hear Temu already. There was some, some mad shredding, but it was kind of lost in the muffling of effects somewhere in the back of this headphone and not in the other. Well, if it's in that headphone, I couldn't possibly hear it. Well, if it's in that one, I assume it's probably also in that one. We gotta go? Yes.
I don't know who came up with the idea of doing this song and doing it like this. It said written by Kevin Sherwood, all of it, but like, good idea. Yo, so many solo mumbo jumbo stuff. I think it was a great idea to get 10 because it's like, you need mad writing skills to get something like this done. Mm -hmm. And to invest in getting that much writing skills, you probably don't have a lot of time left to invest in getting a lot of guitar skills. So then you need someone to be able to play what you wrote. I'm willing to guess that Kevin didn't write the solo for him. You mean the whole song? Pretty much. I think it said at the end that everything was composed by Kevin, didn't it? Everything? I don't know. Let's see this. Written by Kevin Sherwood, James McCall. Traditional lead guitar theme on the side. So, I don't know, it's interpretable. Um, who wrote the leads? We know who played them, but who wrote them? It was very, very good. I got Temu's classic style and thought, that was your headphones. Ow. Uh, <laughs> I got, I definitely heard Temu's style and all of his like mad sweeping and stuff like that. And the kind of tensions that he can put in there and just the super precise tight playing. But then he also kind of en went angry for a couple of bars there. Like really sounded neoclassical and like that. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was a bit too hung up on the whole vibe of the song to notice Neoclassical because Neoclassical takes you in a bit of a different era and this felt more like... I'm not even sure like what. If Interstellar was a horror movie? Well, for the first part, I think the horror vibes kind of went out to, to our, throughout the second half and it kind of just became this like glorious thing. Yeah, but it, it I think it kind of still had the creepiness but it was it kind of translated to epic and dramatic more so than creepy. Yes. So it was like everything that comes after the shock scare. Something like that, yeah. So it's like the first part was the suspense before the demon jumps out of the closet in a horror movie, and then the second part was when you're running to the toilet. You know, before things happen in your pants involuntarily. I can't believe we would associate such a massive soundtrack with the toilet. But then again, it's us. Not just the toilet, but also the potential of things happening beforehand. Right, so uh, that final part where we were seeing the lighthouse, mm -hmm. that was my favorite, yes, because it was like growing, yes, and then growing, yes, and then growing, yes. and then growing, mm -hmm. and then the leaves came on top of that, and then it grew some more, and then it started zooming out, and it was only the same rock we had at the beginning, yes, you see that, and it is called A Light from the Shore, so I don't know why we're assuming it's spacey all the time, because I think it's actually more like being lost at sea and trying to find your way to a shore. Well, I guess we're getting the lost feeling pretty good, because you bet your ass if you're in space, you're bloody lost. I think we're also a bit lost, yes. But we love it, yes. This was a cinematic soundtrack, like... I think the last time we heard something this cinematic that impressed us this deeply was when we heard, uh, Oh, we knew I never loved from Earth Attack. I just thought the same thing. Check that one out, yes. Are we done here? Yes. So if you enjoyed this reaction, we really appreciate the likes and shares. And if you want more, don't forget to subscribe with bells. Thank you very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed your stay and we'd love to see you back at the window very soon. So see ya.